The Topiary Cat, Chapter 5 Baba at Home Next morning wasn't a school day, so the boy was able to do pretty much whatever he liked. After breakfast of a boiled egg and toast, he looked outside for Tolly, his faithful friend. Mummy was always busy with her painting and poetry, so left him to his own devices. Dad was long gone, and Richard had few regrets. They didn't get on. His father was strict, and Richard was willful. Now, Grandpa was a different character altogether. Richard loved him to bits. He resolved to visit him at his little flint lodge. Richard knew Baba wasn't working today either, though he was aware that even on Grandpa's day off, he often went to the gardens to trim the hedges. He was a bit of an obsessive regarding his topiary creations. Tolly was easily found. He was waiting for Richard under the yew hedge, which looked so very much like this beautiful blue-grey creature, it was uncanny. In fact, sometimes, when Tolly was off hunting, the boy would talk to the topiary cat in the same way he did to his furry friend. Richard ducked under the low entrance, his head brushing the leafy arch. He had always been a bit tall for his age, which simply made him attempt to hide away more. He picked up Tolly, and with the cat held snugly against his chest, headed off towards Baba's home. They passed between the imposing gateposts, each crowned with a carved sphinx. Richard always thought Grandpa's home was an enchanting place to live. It was tiny, but very tall, with diamond-patterned windows. The many small panes of ancient distorted glass glittered and created wonderful reflections on the walls inside. The front door, a solid affair with a huge cast-iron fitting, seemed way too big for this diminutive property. Raising the elaborate knocker, which sported an unsettlingly lifelike grimacing face, he let it go with a resounding clunk. The reassuring sound of shuffling feet and a slight grunt announced the presence of his old relative. Tolly craned his neck forward in anticipation then relaxed as the door creaked open. Richard, what a nice surprise, and lovely Tolly too. Come in, come in. Cup of tea and a biggie. Baba had a quirky approach to language, loving wordplay and puns. Biggie was what he called biscuits, or cookies as they're known in the USA. He opened an ancient and beautifully decorated hexagonal tin. Inside was a mouth-watering array of biscuits in assorted colours and flavours. There were chocolate bourbons, pink and cream wafers, iced gems and minty green sugar-coated round ones with a hole in the middle. The bewildering choice didn't stop Richard for one second. He was looking towards Barbara's larder. Grandpa looked up at the ceiling and snorted. He knew what Richard really wanted. A marshmallow-filled, chocolate-coated tea cake, wrapped in glittering foil. He always chose them, and Baba knew it. He was just teasing the lad. And Tolly, what shall we give you, eh? Ah, I know. He disappeared into the kitchen and returned with some tiny scraps of cold chicken. He knew the cat's well-fed and not likely to be hungry, but always appreciated a little treat when visiting. Loud purrs confirmed his assumption. Baba, I have a question. What could make a cat so scared he was trembling like a leaf when I picked him up? Oh, many things can frighten a cat. You're talking about Tolly, though, I guess, and he doesn't scare easily. He's a brave pussy cat. Dogs, maybe? Foxes? Badgers? I've not been aware of any instances locally myself. Had he just had a fright when you picked him up? Richard was reluctant to relate his adventure with the statue in case he was thought silly and merely imagining things. But Grandpa was a man with a vivid imagination too, and quite open to extraordinary events. So the lad recounted what he thought he had seen. Baba went very quiet, listening attentively. After he had heard the story, he looked very thoughtful and a slight frown clouded his features. Don't miss the next chapter of The Topiary Cat, read by Richard Saunders.